Audi's e-tron GT Quattro is a desirable four-door grand touring flagship model for the Ingolstadt maker's growing e-tron EV range. Though most of the core technology here is shared with this car's Porsche Taycan cousin, it's all been delivered with a distinctly Audi feel and character, and most importantly, it has that want one factor. You can't really blame Audi for wanting to share the engineering of this car with Porsche because it is extremely complex. As this e-tron GT's Quattro Monica suggests, it's four-wheel drive, and that's courtesy of motors at the front and rear. The back one connected to a two-speed gearbox, uh, a lower ratio of which is used only for launch control and for some dynamic modes. Total power output, most of which uh, comes from the rear motor, is 476 PS, although there's also a boost mode which raises that to 530 PS for rapid overtaking. If you're interested, all these figures are pretty much the same as those of the mechanically identical Porsche Taycan 4S, as is arguably the most important one, uh, that for the 298 mile driving range. It's okay, but it's some way off what you'll get from a rival Tesla Model S. The performance stats, of course, are very Taycan-like too, which means they're very fast. Uh, 62 from rest, courtesy of the short ratio first gear, occupies just 4.1 seconds on the way to 152 miles an hour. We can't really imagine why that wouldn't be quick enough for you, but if it's not, there is also a faster version of this car, the RS e-tron GT, which has a gutsier 456 PS rear motor and can therefore offer 598 PS in total or 646 PS in boost mode. One of the few dynamic areas in which Ingolstadt could distance the e-tron GT car from its Porsche cousin was the steering. Uh, they made it lighter than a Taycan and more familiar to customers who are graduating into this car from another Audi. The ride's a little softer edged too, especially if you get a version of this car that's equipped with the three chamber air suspension, in which form this car wafts over potholes, speed humps and tarmac tears very impressively indeed. That range figure we quoted earlier, which falls by 15 miles in the RS model, is way off what you'll get with a rival Tesla. Potentially this Audi can charge up much quicker than that American rival though. Uh, theoretically you can pump in 62 miles of range every five minutes, thanks to this car's more sophisticated 800 volt power supply system, although only if you're fortunate enough to find an 800 volt public charger which can allow this car to replenish itself at its peak charging capacity of 270 kilowatts. That's not very likely because uh, we have a undeveloped national charging infrastructure in this country. You're looking at 13 and a half hours if you power up this e-tron GT from a conventional garage wall box. We've never seen an Audi quite like this before. Ingolstadt rather immodestly describes the external design of the e-tron GT as a work of art. Whatever your perspective, it's refreshing that for the first time, the brand has brought us an all-electric model which isn't an SUV. The dimensions are those of a classic Grand Tourer with a 4.99 metre length and 1.96 metres of width, but a height of just 1.41 metres. Plenty to consider then as you admire what Mark Lichter and his design team have achieved here. The elongated bonnet and flat windscreen merge elegantly into a rapidly sloping roof line and the glass house extends tautly over the powerful body, drawing in particularly sharply towards the rear where gently inclined C pillars blend beautifully with the body's muscular shoulders. Sharp edges give particular definition to the large wheel arches forming quattro blisters which visually reference the presence of a new generation of electric quattro all-wheel drive. At the rear, this full-width light strip is a typical Audi touch, but the e-tron GT is set apart from other models in the brand's portfolio by this visually offset lower diffuser. As usual, though, what's even more important is what you can't see, the stiff, sophisticated, aluminium-rich J1 platform that this car shares with its VW Group cousin and its closest market rival, Porsche's Taycan. So distinctly Audi outside, let's open this frameless door and find out whether it'll also be so at the wheel. Absolutely. If you happen to be familiar with the driver-focused monoposto-style cockpit design of the brand's R8 sports car, you'll feel right at home in an e-tron GT. Its cosseting, low-set driving position places you right in the middle of the action. 
just as you would be in this model's Taycan cousin, although, as we were promised, the uh, front of cabin experience here is very different. And it's actually far more interesting. Uh, the upper section of this light, lean instrument panel with its pronounced three-dimensional look uh, forms an elegant arc uh, within which the display of the Audi virtual cockpit instrument screen stands freely, while the MMI Touch central infotainment screen with its uh, piano black finished bezel appears to float in this central space. Uh, this wide centre console, which uh, houses the gear selector switch, runs higher between the seats than it does in that Porsche, which uh, does make the cabin feel rather more cockpit-like. And the dramatic design has left no space for the second lower climate screen that you get in other expensive Audis. But it's certainly very high-end in here, full of suede and carbon fibre and immaculately stitched leather. Time to take a look in the rear. The rear footwells here might look conventional, but they're actually hollowed out sections of the floor plan. Uh, Audi calls them foot garages, which allow your feet to be positioned at the same lower height as the battery pack, uh, rather than being placed on top of it. For a GT-style sports saloon, headroom's actually pretty good, slightly better than the Taycan, despite the standard fitment of this vast panoramic glass roof, without which this part of the cabin would, after all, feel rather dark and claustrophobic. Uh, in theory, the cabin is wide enough to take three adults, but uh, that's discouraged by the sculpting of the two outer seats and by the prominence of this central transmission tunnel here. It's the kind of thing, actually, that you'd think you wouldn't need on an EV at all. Right, let's finish with a look at boot space and start not at the boot, but here at the front. Yes, like a Tesla Model S, you get a little storage space beneath the bonnet, which is activated uh, by a tiny switch that you'll spend ages looking for. It's on the inside open part of the driver's door. The space you get in here is tiny too, just 85 litres of it, around half the size of the one in the Tesla. Anyway, it all means that anything of any size will have to be stored in the rear cargo area accessed via this power-operated boot lid, which can be activated by a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper and which rises to reveal a rather narrow opening and a 366 litre space, which is 39 litres more than you'll get in the Taycan. You can attach the net to the usual floor tie-down points and thanks to the flexible 40-20-40 split of the rear seat back, uh, longer items like skis can be pushed forward between two rear seated passengers. If you need to flatten everything, the space available expands to 1171 litres. Whether you choose this e-tron GT rather than its directly comparable Porsche Taycan cousin will of course be very much down to personal preference. We had expected more of a cost difference in Audi's favour between the two cars, but even so the e-tron GT Quattro shades its cousin on value too, especially once you take specification into account. As for the much trumpeted 800 volt electrical system, which features with both variants and their Taycan cousins, well, that's not much use to British customers who are saddled with an undeveloped public charging infrastructure, that for the time being anyway, will rarely enable them to get the benefit of that sophisticated tech. But you can forgive this e-tron GT much because it's just such a lovely thing to look at. And to some extent, at least, it really does feel like an English that product to drive in terms of steering and the excellent quality of ride. Here then, finally, is an Audi EV you might really desire. It'll give the brand's sensible e-tron badge some much needed want one factor.